Liam, thank you so much. We, we get all these forecasts, you know, the mm. Bank of England are saying the, the recession is going to be shallower than they thought it was going to be. The IMF say that we're going to be in a recession. I just wonder, how, how much are these forecasts worth the paper they're written on? Because it seems to me that none of them ever seem to come true. Oh, you did a bit of an eye-roll <laughs> thing going on there, Liam. Well, you know, I've, I've got lots of letters after my name for various economics degrees. I was a professional economist. And forecasting is a useful exercise. It makes means you get together all the evidence you can. You think very hard about particular issues. But economics is never a science. It's a dismal science. Uh, that's, that's the subriquet. And forecasts aren't destiny. That's all I would say. The Bank of England was, in my view, ridiculously gloomy until yesterday. It was saying that the UK would stay in recession for almost two years, the longest slump pretty much of modern times. It's now saying that the UK will stay in recession for about a year or just over a year. So it's still quite gloomy, as is the IMF. I think they're both not really understanding what's happening in business. If you look at what stock markets are doing, there's a sense that a corner now is being turned. There's a sense that inflation is coming down. People like me who look closely at supply chains and talk to business leaders here in the UK and across the world, there's, a, there's an urgency that we want to get out of this funk. The animal spirits, as John Maynard Keynes called them, are starting to stir. And I, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not going to, you know, channel Norman Lamont and say there are green shoots coming, but I do think the worst of this slowdown is over. I do think the worst of inflation is over. I do think interest rates have either peaked or will peak at just 4.25%. And by the way, I've been saying that for months and was called ridiculous, and now the financial markets think that's true I, too. I think, I think our concern, and most people's concern, is it becomes front-page news, yeah. this doom and gloom, and that means you should change who you've got in the you know, exchequer, that means you should change political party, that means you should change something different. And actually, there are just maybe this could happen, not this is. Yeah. So it's the impact on policy decisions, and I don't know, people who run businesses... Yeah, decisions. these Whitehall bean counters... Uh, and pencil suckers, right? They haven't really done any business in their life. They've often gone straight from university into these institutions, which are very much echo chambers of opinion. They don't really get out very much. If you get out a lot and you've been in business, as I have, and you understand business, there is an urgency now to get out of this uh, slowdown. I'll tell you what business leaders want. They want Rishi Sunak not to raise corporation tax from 19 to 25% on March the 15th. They want him to at least freeze corporation tax at 19%. Because there's the expectation it will go up, because it's been legislated for, just to freeze the tax, it wouldn't be a tax cut, but it would feel like a massive boost to the economy. And I think the modelling you get from central banks around the world, it's not just the Bank of England, and there are decent people in the Bank of England, but I do think they're constrained by their world view. It isn't dynamic modelling. They don't understand how policy can impact well, outcomes uh, but, but through impacting sentiment. After Liz Truss, when they got rid of it, oh, Liz Truss, like, oh, the tax, yes, you can't do that, you can't cut taxes. The next minute now, oh, they you know, could go into recession, cut taxes. So you can't really listen to what they say. So those forecasters, they seem to change their mind all the time. I could see Louise there completely agreeing with what you said about how we need to boost the confidence of business. And I guess, Daniel, you're agreeing that as well, what we need to do to give them some hope and optimism. I think we're sort of constrained by the Office for Budget Responsibility. I mean, civil servants are paid to be extremely cautious, right? But you need political leadership here. And leadership involves sometimes taking calculated risks, and that's what we need to do. Taxation's at a 70-year high. To me, it makes no sense to increase tax rates even more, would be the only major economy in the world doing that as we're trying to get out of this slowdown. I mean, the, the, this, the thing of forecasting interests me because I, what staggered me, I mean, I can understand why you make a forecast for the future and it's wrong. What staggered me over recent weeks is that the ONS have made forecasts about what's actually happened. And got it wrong. And got it mass... Okay, I mean, that, uh, in defence of the Office of National... Don't I bother. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, just to give an example, they suggest that the UK's average output per hour worked growth was 5% during 2020 and 2021. And they've now revised it and said, oh, actually, it wasn't a 5% growth. It, went, it was minus 0.3%. That is a big adjustment. I mean... <laughs> so the Office of National Statistics, <laughs> I, I do think they did a decent job doing, during the COVID lockdown monitoring um, the, the pandemic. I do think in general they do a decent job. They've got a good international represent, rep, rep, reputation. They don't really do forecasting and they're not a pol political organisation at all, a, a, as you know. But when you're measuring GDP, the sum total of all transactions in the economy, 
it does take a long time to collate them. So any GDP number, it will bring out a preliminary number. And then at one, three months later, there'll be a revised number yes. and then there'll be a final number. So they have three uh, well, kind of bites then of the Then it's cherry. sort of the way the newspapers cover it. And they should have a health warning. Not that this is the definitive, you know, all-seeing crystal ball, we know what's happening. It should be, this is a maybe, this is a possibility. I want to bring